Hey, what's going on everyone? Big here for Serpentax Tech. And in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at what the thermals are on the MOSFETs inside of this Ice River KS0 Pro. We're really pushing this power supply to its limits, only rated at 120 watts, and we modified the firmware, and it's running at 126 watts. So it's definitely warmer than what I would like it to be at, but most importantly, can we improve the MOSFET thermals? So we wanna take off these side blades, on either side to get better airflow. And then I wanna put a thermocouple on one of the MOSFETs to see what those internal temperatures are. But first, let's go look at the miner online using the Ice River monitor from T-Swift, as well as what it's pushing at the pool right now. All right, so we're looking at the miner at the pool level and we're averaging every 24 hours, basically 260 giga hash, which is the firmware that I have loaded on it. And if we pull up the monitoring software, which by the way, um, you can get from T-Swift and Company's Telegram and just load it. I think they come out with updates. You put in the IP address of the machine, choose which model you have, make sure you select the right model, hit read. And now it's gonna load up the chip temperatures, which the hottest chip right now is at 71.47 degrees Celsius. It's a little bit toasty. The outboard temperature is 64. The outboard temperature is important to me because that is actually how I identify if the MOSFETs are cooking really, really bad. Matter of fact, if we go to my other one, which has the 340 giga hash uh, one or the 320, but it's doing about 340 giga hash, uh, the outboard temperature is 79, sometimes the hottest 82 degrees Celsius. So the MOSFETs are at its limits, even with the heat sink modifications and thermal, um, uh, you know, airflow modifications that I've done. So on the stock one, uh, or at least a stock thermal solution, on the slightly modified one, that's what these differences are. So one, you've seen on the channel already, I got fans on it, I got the sides open, I upgraded or uh, replaced the thermal paste with better thermal paste, th better thermal pads, heat sinks, the works. Whereas this one, I haven't done any of that. And I just wanna open up the side vents to see if it drops the temperature. So we're gonna do that first, let things settle in and see what the temperatures settle at just by opening up those side skirts or, and side skirts like it's a car, or if you get the one from uh, the meter box, the, the 3D printed or 3D print your own uh, with the SLT files, it basically those side plates have vents in it. So let's do that now and see what the thermal solution gets down to. Hottest chip, 71.52. And then the outboard temperature, hottest temperature of around, I would say 66 degrees Celsius, 64 right now. Let's see the difference. All right, and thermals are stabilizing. And just by removing those side blades or, or panels, we drop the temperatures. Uh, the outboard temperature is 59. The hottest chip is still 70, so it's a little bit hotter than what I want. But again, I'm pushing, I'm using firmware uh, that I should have modified or added additional cooling before I applied it. Uh, but you can see we dropped from 71.5 to 70, and then the outboard temperature dropped from 64 degrees Celsius down to 59 so now let's add some thermistors to the mosfets and see if we can get some temperature readings so you already seen this on a previous video with the modified one um this is a, and yes that is cardboard by the way um these are six screws we just need to take these off because once we lift this up it's gonna be the two fan connections uh to two four pin pwm headers and uh you're gonna see these little metal uh, extensions that are actually sinking the thermal pads or the back of the chips to this plate right here. And that's all we need to gain access to to add the thermistor and all that good stuff. I'm gonna tear it down now and show you what it looks like with the thermistor applied to the MOSFET. All right, so you can see we got our two thermistors coming off. I have them capped in tape onto the two middle MOSFETs out of the four and we need to steal my mining rigs uh, thermocouple and use this to get measurements off of the device. So I'm gonna hook this all back up right now. These only plug in one way. If you look very carefully, there's a plus and a minus and you can see on the device, there's a plus and a minus. And then I could switch between device by hitting this button or whatever metrics I need to max average, stuff like that. So let's get this hooked up and see what those MOSFETs are up to on the monitoring software and then compare that against what the MOSFET temperature is on here. All right, so we're just booting up. It's gonna take a minute, it's initializing. 
but we got one sitting at roughly 31 degrees Celsius already and the other one at 30.8 degrees Celsius so we need to let it get up to temperature and add a load and let's see what it stabilizes as so oddly enough the device restarted a couple times so I don't have an accurate 30 minute hash rate for you because it restarts before it gets to that 30 minute. It restarted at the 18 minute mark and then the 21 minute mark. And I'm not quite sure why, because the outboard temperature is only 58, which is a lot lower than what it was before of 64. And then the hottest chip is like 66 degrees compared to the 71.52 that we were hitting before. So it's not that that's causing it to restart something else. I might do a fresh uh, install of the firmware, uh, but let me show you what the VRM thermals are right now at the device using uh, the thermal couples. All right, so the temperatures on the 260 giga hash, at least external temperatures, is 61.3 Celsius. Nowhere near what the overall should be, or excuse me, the uh, TJ Maxx for these MOSFETs should be of 120, 125 degrees Celsius. But I can see if we push to the higher hash rate, like the 340 giga hash, 360 giga hash, how this could potentially be a problem. But 61.3 is what we're getting with the 260 giga hash firmware. And so that was really the main point of the video is, is you know, with this 260 giga hash firmware loaded, what are the MOSFETs actually hitting thermal-wise? Um, there's not a a thermistor, unfortunately, inside those four MOSFETs. That would have been the best way to get an accurate gauge of the therm uh, temperatures instead of an external laying on top of a thermistor. Uh, but I wanted to share this information with you because if you if you think about it, and we're pushing these uh, devices to the 340 gigahash, 360 gigahash, you're going to need decent heat sinks and decent airflow cooling of some type just to keep the devices... Uh, functioning and, and stable 24 7 especially as we're putting more voltage and more power through it but i just wanted to share this information with you in this video if you enjoyed it do me a favor hit the like button on the way out make sure to get subscribed hit the notification bell to stay up to date as well as check out some of the links in the description to help support the channel and what we do here i see a number of you are not hitting the notification bell to stay up to date with what the channel is doing or if i go live please do so it helps out the channel and definitely share this out to your colleagues family friends whatever it might be I'm going to continue to push the firmware further, you know, up, you do the 270 giga hash, 280 giga hash, see what those MOSFET temperatures are. I'll try to record those numbers for you and present it in a different video. So stay tuned. I'll catch you in the next one and have yourself a wonderful day. Take care.